Oh, why, wait, wipe your nose because you don't want the people to see you snotting, 19 year old. So, so you still watch Disney Channel and you don't even know how to wipe your ass good. Tell them. Tell them. I still watch Disney Channel. And you what? I can't wait. You, you, and you don't wipe your butt good, right? Tell them. Tell them. I don't. just said it. Uh, say it again. I told you, stop playing with me. This motherfucker cut my baby hair out of here. Look at that now shit. Wait. That shit sad. It hurt now my wait. baby feeling. Now wait. Cause you don't hurt the dad. You hurt her feelings. You hurt my baby feelings. My baby sat there for two hours. I do my own girl help. My baby sat there for two hours. Issue is you. That's it's up. fucking you. Really? It's what is you? What might that be? It's you. Okay. You are disgusting sometimes. Like now, you disrespect everybody. I'm real with everything. You wasn't ever there, so bye. How was I never there? Name a motherfucker that chase can say that. All right, you got really? it. Really? Never there for what? I'm here. I'm right in your motherfucking face. Now you're just being like disrespectful, like you're this close to my face. You're spitting at me, like you're chastising me, like it's not cool, and I didn't like it at all. You lied on me! And this is why I'm about to break the cycle. King and Dream will never see this. Bye. Dreamy comes Saturday, Sunday. I don't have nothing to do with it. So wait, so what this is, is this is why she's not here! You a weirdo. Monday, a whole Saturday, weirdo. Sunday, you Monday, Tuesday, bipolar. Wednesday. Mental issues. Five days. You put your hand in my face again, girl. Five days. You're going to stretch your ass across this mother so kitchen. Good. You better keep your mother five, hands five, on my face. Five days. Don't touch me no more. Five days. You do it again, I'm going to rock your world in this mother So rock it. You put your fucking hands on me again. So rock it. Put your hands on me again. Rock it. You a disrespectful so five ass girl. Days. You disrespectful is what you are. You need to get some help. Uh, no. So you no, need to let's get some talk help. about it. No, you need to get some help. You're let's nuts. talk about you're, getting you're, you some mental help. No, something's wrong. You're nuts. Something's wrong. Out of my face. Something. You thought you were disobeying me today, and I was not coming to cut this hair off. You're sadly mistaken because you thought being pretty was so much better than being educated or listening to your mom, right? Yes. This is what happens when you don't listen to your mom. My mom. Tell what you talking about yourself, bro. Right. And you don't give a It's not my fault. I don't care. You're not going to fault me for that. You the right only parent in a house. That's why I got to do this. I got to do for my daughter. Murdered, and you're bro, not going to tell me. you talking about that yourself. Why? Why are you talking about yourself, bro? Because you think you're why? still being selfish right now. How? Because you're screaming at me. You shouldn't You shouldn't respect me. <laughs> Come on, get out. Leave my husband alone for me. Get out. Go and marry your own husband. I said get out! Daddy, bye bye. Bye bye, You are jealous of your daughter. <laughs> I'm starting a new series on this channel called The Rant Booth, where we can come on here and just vent and rant about our issues and things that we're going through for the day. Whatever's on my heart, I'll come on here and just rant and vent. And y'all can feel free to do the same in the comments. So, it was on my heart today to speak on this subject. And I want to talk about narcissistic mothers and how they treat their daughters especially when their daughters are attractive or pretty when they hit puberty it seems to be the worst for me i never felt like my mom ever really liked me me and her never got along me and her always fought every time we see each other to this day we fight the furthest memory i have back when i felt like my mom never had my back was at a ninth grade high school dance i was about 14 years old and i was dancing with my boyfriend at the time we were innocent dancing. I was still a virgin at this time, so I was a good girl. I was a church girl. I was a pastor's kid, so I loved God, and I, I acted like a church girl and everything, and everybody knew I was a good girl. But there was these group of girls, unambiguous girls, that always picked on me. I was the new girl at this school, so they would always pick on me. And then I remember they made a rumor that I was dancing promiscuous, promiscuous at this dance. 
and they told the security guard and the security guard pulled me to the side and asked me what I was doing and he ended up calling my mom I told him I wasn't doing anything I wasn't dancing inappropriate I wasn't dancing inappropriate they're making this up they didn't believe me they called my mom and when my mom got there she didn't even believe me and so I got in trouble for that and a couple of days later I had got sick and threw up and she was asking me am I pregnant and I was just like she always thought I was fast even though I wasn't and mind you you guys this is a very very small town that I'm in at the time this is like the deep south and so rumors spread fast that I was being fast even though I wasn't like when I say this is a small town everybody's basically related not everybody but you know, it's that small where you have, you go to school with most of your cousin. It's a very small town. And rumor was spreading around the family that I was fat. I was fast. And I didn't like that. That wasn't cool because it wasn't who I was. But at the time I was young, I didn't know how to deal with it. So I just kind of compressed it and just tried to ignore it, you know. But I would always get male attention from guys and people always say I'm pretty and I just felt like she just felt a way about this and not only that I also felt like she had a way she felt a way about the color of my skin because I was lighter than her the reason why I think this is because when my father cheated on her with light-skinned women she told me this even though I didn't want to, I didn't want to hear, no, my mom doesn't care what she tells me about, because she's so resentful towards my dad, like when she's mad at him or triggered, she will vent to anybody, including me, and she told me this when she was venting to me, that my dad cheated on her with light-skinned women. For context, my mom is unambiguous, she has the same phenotype as Oprah Winfrey, uh, about the same complexion too. A little bit darker and for those who don't know me my phenotype resembles fancy from the Jamie Foxx show I get her I get Halle Bailey and my complexion is about their complexion as well I'm Fenty shade I'm Fenty shade 330 his my dad has a baby mama because he had a daughter before they met before I was born and they and she was high yellow light skin and um, she doesn't like her she doesn't like her daughter which is my half sister she treated us like trash and she I have a aunt my father's sister right did my mom's hair back in the 80s before I was born and she told me that my aunt took her hair out by putting a perm in it it was a white girl perm or whatever and so she didn't like my my aunt my dad's sister my aunt and she was also high yellow and so with that seeing this pattern i feel like maybe she has some type of feelings towards me because i'm the lightest kid and i get the most compliments from people and so i noticed when i hit puberty is when our relationship just was never the same. She's treated me the worst out of me and my sister. Because I have a sister, but she doesn't get as many compliments as me. And I made a video about how I feel guilty about th about that. You know, the guilt that I feel for that. With the, you know, but I have a video on that. But I felt guilty about these things. I wasn't conceited or anything. I was, I was a shy, quiet girl. But my mom just always treated me like I was the opposite. My mom has never been proud of me. I have many accomplishments. I am in my 30s now and I have been in the military. I have two bachelor's degrees. I am pursuing acting. I have an agent. I do videography on the side. I work with celebrities, you guys. When I do videography, I, I shoot music videos on the side. That's what I got my second degree in. So all of these things, and not only that, I have traveled all over the world. I have lived 
from Germany to Poland to Japan. And then where I reside now, I live in the Valley of California. If y'all know anything about the Valley of California, it is really nice out here. So, I, last year, right, my mom and my parents and my whole family came to visit me in California because I, I just moved out here a couple years ago and from the East Coast. So they came to visit from the East Coast and to see where I live. And, you know, I'm not too crazy about them visiting because my when my mom is with them, I always feel some type of way. So when I know she's about to come and visit, I'll get, I get anxiety real bad because I already know we're going to get into it. But they get here and they looking at my house. My dad is like, oh, it's nice. Oh, you live in a really nice area. I'm proud of you. And okay, you're doing your thing out here. But my mom is, of course, always looking for something wrong. She's looking for something wrong. Because I ha I'm dating this guy that she doesn't like. She judges him. She prejudges him. She judges him from the get-go. Didn't want to get to know him or anything. So they don't have a relationship. So she's coming over judging trying to prejudge the situation to try to see if i'm doing any drugs or into no good she's always looking for something very judgmental especially towards me i'm doing a i'm very successful out here i have a hundred percent va rating if y'all know y'all know so it's like i'm doing my thing and it's like she is never proud of me if anything she's trying to look for a reason to sabotage my life my mom was never affectionate with me. She was more affectionate with my brother than me and my sister. But especially with me. Me and her always fought. But she was never affectionate. This caused issues in my adult relationships because I can never be affectionate with any guy that I've dated. I've always been too afraid to be affectionate. It was always something that I was afraid to do. I didn't know how to do. But I wanted, I knew I wanted it. I just didn't know why I couldn't do it until I realized that I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't raised on affection. I wasn't, I didn't receive that. So I don't know how to give it. I people please as an adult because I was always trying to make my mom proud and please her and never could. And that affects how I am to this day. And people pleasing is something that I am trying to to this day trying to heal and overcome because people have ran over me majority of my life and I let them I let people run all over me I let men abuse me because I was searching for that love that I didn't receive as a kid you know thinking back it's like oh wow that's why I let people run all over me because I'm people pleasing i'm looking for some type of love and affection like it's really hard for me to maintain and keep relationships you have i had a high sense of worthlessness as a child i felt very depressed for years and i was just i always lived vicariously through mothers on the television like i was like i wish i had a mom like that like like um Aunt Viv or the Family Matters mom. I forgot her name. Um, but it was certain TV shows that I would watch and be like, live vicariously through the mothers. Whitney Houston was one of my biggest like moms in my head because my mom wasn't like a mom mom to me. And I felt like a lot of it has to do with how I look. Because she doesn't do that with my little sister. Which, my little sister, she's... If she would take care of herself better, she could look better. But she let herself go. So she doesn't get as many... Uh, she doesn't get a, as much attention as I did. And then my features are a little different than my sister's. I have keener features. And in the African American community, keener features are seen as more attractive so and I learned that it's called featurism later on in my life why why that was the case like why people treated us so different but we kind of looked similar though but I plan on making this a series a whole playlist narcissistic because I can go on this all day I don't want this video to be too long but I I wanted to come on here and 
vent a little bit about how narcissistic mothers treat their daughters, especially when they're jealous of them. It always made me feel funny when I would hug my dad. Even m male family members, she would make me feel funny about being around certain male family members. I remember going over to my cousin's house and she thought we were messing around. My first cousin. He's like a year younger than me, but she thought we were messing around because we were in the back of my grandma's house playing video games. I'm like, you're not accusing her, my other sister. Why are you accusing me? So it's like she never had my back ever. I always felt lonely as a child. I felt like I couldn't talk to my mom because she was jealous of me. My dad always had her. My dad was always gone because he was in the military. I felt like I couldn't talk to him. I was bullied my whole childhood and my parents didn't know about it until I was an adult because I felt like I couldn't talk to them about the abuse I was going through. I've been through a lot because of how I look, how people treat me, you know, especially my own people, black people. When I was around black people, I got bullied the most and I grew up around I grew up a military kid, so I grew up in diverse communities, from Asian to white communities to Hispanic communities. And when I ever, anytime I ever go to the black communities is when I get bullied the most. It's really unfortunate. And I can't go to my mom, so it's like, yeah, pretty women are lonely, guys. Like, Cause I know I'm not the only one who's going through this. If you're a pretty female, you have a narcissistic mother, like, I can't imagine how lonely you feel, because I feel lonely, no matter who we talk to. The only person I feel like I can talk to is other pretty girls and a therapist, <laughs> and God, of course. But, you guys, this was just a rant. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for listening. If you have to cut your mom off, cut her off. Sometimes your mom is jealous of you. And as much as she does not want to admit it, and she probably never will, you can sense it. Like your intentions with her are so pure. But she always thinks of you in a negative light. Like when it comes to you, it's always something negative that she has to say about you. Never what you intend to be to her, which is a good person. She always twists it to make it like you're this negative person. Or she's always complaining. She doesn't want you to have fun if she is not having fun. It's like your competition to her. It's like she can't process the fact that she's getting older and you are growing into a woman. And you probably have more confidence than she did at that age. You want to make her proud and you never can. Nothing you ever do is good enough for her. This will stunt your growth. This will stunt your confidence. This will make you think less of yourself because your mom the person that birthed you thinks less of you cut her off